Greetings lords and ladies, Kaiser here and welcome to another episode of our Epirus campaign in Imperator Rome. Now, when last we left off, we had completely taken over the province of Epirus as well as a small chunk of Aetolia. Now, about a few months have gone by, or rather two years actually, ho <laughs> ho. Two years have gone by, nothing much has happened. I've been waiting for Macedon to go to war or something. Because I've noticed that if we declare war in my other games, that if I declare war on any of our neighbors or anything like that, Macedon immediately starts planning our demise because they know that we're gonna be uh, focused on something else and that they can take their opportunity. And basically we are doing the exact same thing right now. And the reason I stopped uh, forwarding is because I noticed Macedon is currently at war with Troizen. Now, granted, this is a one city minor city state, so the war will probably not last too long, so we do not have too, too long to do what we want to do. Now, here is what we want to do. First things first, we go Oath of Brotherhood in order to increase the army morale recovery. We start maintaining our army on the normal maintenance as well as right 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 before I forget I actually realized that one way a very good way for us to not be losing as much money is actually take down a few of the forts that we don't need and really we don't need one in Korkira we don't need one in which one would make more sense probably Stratos since anyone that came from that side would have to go to Stratos anyone who came from that side would have to go to Stratos and that is already massed on, so they could just immediately go to Thermos. And we'll take it down in Thermos, like that. There, and just like that, our balance has gone <laughs> up by quite a portion. Right, now then. Start moving our armies towards Tolantia. This is hopefully our opportunity. Like, uh, we are taking a gamble. And hopefully we are doing a good gamble. Sorry about that, everyone. Of course, people call me at the <laughs> most opportune moments. So, yeah. We are going to start moving our armies up. One thing that we will do is also change the commander or rather replace a commander here. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to select Philonidas. And the reason for that is that I want to move Pyrrhus, possibly, or... Philonidas, whichever one, into Epidamnos, aka the capital of Tolantia, and immediately detach a siege and move the rest of the army out. That way, the rest of the army will not be taking too much attrition, and then place the Alcatid family member, aka the guy with 10 marshal, as the commander of the siege army. That way, he'll get an additional pip every single month um, for the siege. Now, hopefully, Troizen actually manages to put up a good enough of a fight to make sure that we can possibly get this war over with quickly. Invite a defensive leak from Igon. Let me see, who else is in this defensive leak? You are alone, therefore, no. We will not be joining that one. Thrace, are you still allied with Thrace? You are, you're still at war with Troizen. Please, Troizen, don't let me down! Uh, covert actions, fabricate claim right now. Let's go move the rest of the army up. Let's go, 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 go. Troizen still exists. Alright, can we declare war? Yes. Boetia and Daorsia will help in this war. But they're not that strong, or at least they shouldn't be. Ten cohorts. Boetia has six cohorts. All we want to do is quickly... Move through the Talantian lands. Let's go. Troizen, don't let me down. A son has been born to Pyrrhus. Why, thank you, game. Though, maybe it's not the best of ideas, or rather the best of things to actually have too many sons. Let me see, if we move here... Nope, we cannot. Can you move and start that battle? Nope. Alright. So that was a foolish move on my part. Stopping both of those sieges. Uh, once more, the renowned Olympic Games are due to occur. Alright, so who do we send? Let's see. He's the researcher. He's... Oh god, he's the general we're gonna need. So we actually have to send the researcher. Um, Hector. Go, Hector! 
Troizen no longer exists, which means that Macedon will probably now begin... Negative at war, uh-huh. So they're not planning our demise just yet. Let's see if we can actually manage to finish this war quickly. We are going to take the um, heavy infantry morale. Alright, straight in, straight in. Let's go, let's go, let's go fast. Fast, 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 fast. Not planning our demise just yet, alright. There we go. Uh, detach siege, move the army out, and now place the guy with the 10 in Epidamnos. Of course, we're gonna accept the trades. The Kingdom of Macedonia has long meddled in the affairs of Epirus and stimmied our options for growth and influence in Hellas. That is correct! The Thracians on the opposite side of Macedon are in a similar position, jealous of the power of a rival which has co cornered them for generations. We could treat with the Diadochus Lysimachus Alchimachid. In Thrace, given our mutual interest against the Macedonians and our unique position surrounding the Kingdom of Alexander, they will see the benefits to it. Yeah, let's try and get an alliance with them, possibly, or something. Alright, let's do this quick. Tremendous! Epirus gain... Wait, Epirus gains 75 opinion of Epirus. What? That's... Excuse me? They gain opinion, of course. And hopefully they uh, guarantee us or something now that we're on such good terms. Hopefully, we'll see. Alright, so that's... We can't move the rest of the army out. Let's see if we can win this siege quickly and possibly end this war. Let's go, 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 go. Go, 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 go. Right, we do need a researcher. Or then again, we wait for the guy to come back. We'll wait for the guy to come back. We can wait a little bit. Uh, the Pithate family is not happy. You only have one guy. He's not very good at anything. Alright, Macedon is still being relatively peaceful over there. Olympics concluded. Oh well, better luck next time. Indeed. Now, the Talantians sent their army down there as well, so that's for military, sure. Uh, can we already select him back? Not yet, alright. Let's go, 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 go. What's the situation? Still not planning our demise, alright. Hellenistic global power of Kaidonia, thank you very much for the gold, I'll take it. Uh, another invention is possible, omen power, diplomatic reputation, national tribesmen, military tech investments, start, uh, what? Starting experience, trireme discipline. I'd say omen power, what's our omen? Yeah, it's still gonna be around for a while. Sure, let's go omen power. Yeah. Alright. 7%. I'm sorry to anyone, one pop died. So they're gonna go for Nicopolis probably next, but... Let's see where this goes. I mean, we could, like, Daorsia, are they at war? They are at war with us, and they now have 17 armies. We could, of course, just pull these two armies down, fight them, but I'm afraid of the Daorsians coming in and causing trouble for us. Now, Talantia is the only kingdom that we want to take down. There we go! There we go, alright. Um... Take Sisapo, and these three will automatically fall under us because of the uh, influence from this fort. Boom. Alright, Sisapo. There's the Diorsian army. Can we sue for peace? Can we take. Yes, they will accept. We'll take all of their money as well. Okay. Uh, the gamble seems to have paid off. Alright. After a protracted conquest, we have finally routed the Talantian armies. Well, not really, they're still in Nicopolis, but yeah. Pass judgment on them. Not too good, not too good, not too good, not too good. Alright, have them all crucified. Sounds terrible, but yeah. <laughs> and Macedon, are you still going to keep quiet? They're still gonna keep quiet? Alrighty! They're not planning our demise just yet. Now, that should go away. Excellent. Alright. We've gained a very big portion of land here, thanks to that. And another good thing, actually, is that the city of Botho... 
I, I swear to God, now, th this is not on purpose, but whenever I see this name, uh, or rather, at the beginning of uh, when I started playing Imperator Rome, whenever I saw this name, I just could not help but chuckle, because, come on, does it not sound like a certain part of the body? <laughs> right, okay, so we will need a governor. Kalistratos Terid, his loyalty is good, zero corruption, so that's definitely very, very nice. Enslavement efficiency, what's your... Ah, Marshall is only three, so you would never be a good leader. Effects of Gunner, local slave output. How many slaves does uh, Illyria Graica have? Only four, so that wouldn't be very meaningful there. Um... Let's see. This guy seems to be the best, honestly. Loyalty's fine. Finesse is the same. He doesn't really have any additional props, but you know what? We'll take it. Alrighty. We do have enough gold, or rather not gold, but civic power to also open up another trade route over here. Now, what would we want to open up? Illyria Grag? No, don't go that. Go cultural assimilation, please. Because we need to culturally assimilate the Talantians into our midst. Um, let's see. They do have citizens and they have freemen. So we should definitely look at local freemen happiness, local slave. No, either local citizen happiness or, or local freemen happiness. Now, citizen happiness we could get from these guys. Let's see, uh, tribes, yeah, we'll have to do something with the tribes. These guys are seemingly fine, these guys are seemingly fine, so they're not exactly unhappy. Um, the Molossians angered, these guys are going to keep being a thorn in our sides for quite a while. How much longer? Okay, for two more years, alright, alright, so not that much longer, but for two more years, the loyalty of our lands are go is going to go down. Though, Etolia apparently is now gaining loyalty, how come? It changed by Pyrrhusekide, Capital Region, Thermos, alright, so the other two, Neopactos and Stratos, are apparently no longer unhappy. That's good, it's very good. Thermos is the only one that's still unhappy. Let's see, the following cities are currently starving. Thermos and Nicopolis. Probably because it's been looted, right? Starving city. Occupied. It's not occupied anymore. What are you... There. It's fine. Nicopolis is still... No, that's not Nicopolis. This is Nicopolis. Yeah, it's been looted. Mm-hmm. Where does it actually show temporary modifiers? None. So that's not a temporary one, is what the game is saying. Sure, Kaidonia, why not? You did pay me a sum of money, so go ahead. Alright, Macedon is currently at war with Igon. Which means that, technically speaking, we could go to war with these guys. With Kavia. Now, that would bring our stability down, which is dangerous, which is very dangerous. Now, the only reason I'm thinking about this, hear me out, is that if we do so, if we attack Kavia right now when they're still allyless, or not sure how else to put it, um, though they would probably just ally themselves with Pieria, or even Dardania and bring those guys into the war as well. The reason I'm thinking about it is this. We are currently a local power with uh, with 23 cities. So two more cities and we become a regional power. Now once we become a regional power, we are going to double our bonus. Not the monthly tyranny and citizen happiness, but the monthly power increase bonus. So we're not going to get just plus one, we're going to get plus two. What's more, becoming a regional power means that we will be on par with Macedon. So we could possibly even ally ourselves with Macedon for the time being, um, until we become strong enough to actually take them on. 
And Thrace is also regional power, so we could become their ally as well, not just wait for them to possibly grant us a guarantee. So that's 12 units. Or rather, 12 cohorts, sorry, not 12 units. But that's just a retinue. Those are two retinues of the Kavians. They are a settled tribe. So they could still gain a lot more units if they actually trained up. Because these are not being paid by the actual, um, well, the actual main tribe. They're being paid by the uh, clan chiefs. I'm legit afraid of Pieria jumping into the war, should we declare war here. Though they are at war with their northern neighbors, so possi the possibility of them joining in is slightly smaller. However, Dardania could also uh, jump in. They're a settled tribe as well, so those 11 cohorts are most likely... Um, uh, da -da 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 -da. Retinues, just like that one. I mean, our armies are still up there. Um, Fort Maintenance, do we keep a fort in Epidamnos? I guess it makes sense. It's not too bad of an investment over there. Ah, oh, decisions, decisions. Score... I would love if it actually showed how long the war has been going on. Now, Igon is at war with a lot of people, so they're probably not going to last too long in this war. So the war will end relatively soon. And if we get into a protracted war with the Kavians, like, I don't know, if they call in Dardania, and we actually lose too much manpower, and Macedon starts planning our demise... That could and will be problematic. I mean, one thing we can definitely do is also sacrifice to the gods, so that would increase our... Nope, there we go. It's only as once again losing. Neopactus Thormos, everybody is unhappy there. Why? Gives a local, which is then multiplied by... Has 40% of the population. Unhappy Pops. The Freeman. Oh, they're Hebrews! They're Jewish Hebrews. Sorry about that, everyone. You know how... When your boss just keeps calling you, and you can't exactly tell her, Hey, I'm kind of in the middle of something. Can you not call me right now? I'm recording. <laughs> yeah, that's basically what's been going on right now. Now, I've decided that um, despite the fact that Macedon is currently at war. Going into another war immediately will just gain us aggressive expansion and actually beat down our stability even further. So, I've decided to wait a little bit. And first thing I want to do is focus on Aetolia, which is still losing um, loyalty right now. Epidamnos, everything okay there? It's on zero population. What? It's gonna become... Wait, how did that happen? <gasps> that means it's gonna become uncolonized, or rather, unoccupied. In just a moment. Alright, can we move? Yes, we can move. Okay, okay. So, who are we gonna move in into Epidamnos? Let's see. I say we move one of the Freemen. Move to Epidamnos. There. Alright. Now, we're not going to lose this piece of land. Whew! Alright. One more thing I want to do. Um, let me see. Let's go sacrifice to the gods. Increase the stability. That should cause the loyalty to start going up a little bit more, I believe. Now, Pactus, what are you actually still upset about? The Molossians angered, of course. And you, you're a Jewish Hebrew, which is why you're also unhappy. I'm thinking about making the Aetolian um, focus also cultural assimilation, because there's simply too, too many Aetolians in there. Though, when you think about it, even Epirus... What is Epirus's current... No, they're all Epirates. 
Probably the only ones that are not Emperor are the slaves. Yep. What about, like, over here? Emperor, 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 yeah. Alright, so as soon as we have 50 oratory power, we will say cultural simulation for Atolia as well. Researcher needed. Did the guy come back? He is excellent. Alright. Uh, Nicopolis has starving pops. Troublesome. But this pop will not die for quite a while, I believe. Or at least it shouldn't. Can I please check the... Pop will dying. Every month, 0.20 is lost. But where's the little indicator telling me how much it is right now? Like, yes, I'm losing 0.20, but... Where are we at right now? Because if you check here, it says every month, 0... I mean, 22... Uh, 0... Point 22 is gained, and it is currently at 22.88. Like, where is that piece of information here? Why doesn't it say where we're at currently? Probably an oversight. Offer allies from... Pre yeah, sure, I'll accept that. They're pretty strong. And that should keep... Macedon from doing anything too, too foolish. Now then, Lysos has two, th four, five pops. I wish to move certain pops, or m a few more pops, like five of these, perhaps. Maybe this guy. We don't have enough civic power. Alright, so we are going to keep using our civic power that we accumulate to move our pops into Lysos. Now, the reason I want to do that is so that we can actually colonize Butthole. With that, we're going to be on 24 cities, so we're going to be one short. So, as soon as we see that Macedon is in a larger war, we're going to do something. We're going to do either uh, do a war with Kavia, who is currently uh, in an alliance and a defensive pact with Dardania, so that's not too good. Uh, we could attack the Orsia. Though Dindaria, who's that? Are apparently... Wait, are you the subject? Oh no, Dardania is the subject. Dindaria, good god. Like, look at this. Dardania, Dindaria, there's like one more here that's about the same. There's another Dindaria right there, like, what? <laughs> so these guys are their subjects, alright. Uh, I'm just a little bit nervous about these guys, really. I'm always nervous about Macedon until you get strong enough. Uh, no, we're not going to be in the defensive pack, sorry. But we cannot have too many um, diplomatic relations. A messenger has been sent by Helenus Helva from the Coplas. A fleet of pirates has attacked the port, and it does not look like they're going to let up anytime soon. He is asking for aid immediately to put an end to this. Some of our other advisors at court has suggested making a more permanent change to our laws to make sure this problem will not resurface in a couple of years. The system needs to be changed to fix this. Epirus Institute's anti-piracy edict. We would go 150 into the minus. Let me just see. Show laws. Uh, anti-piracy, what does it do? Literally just pirate spawn chance. He can deal with it. He gains popularity, gains prominence, and we lose 50 military power. Prominence really does not um, does not pose any power or anything right now, any danger. Helenos loses 10. They will move from our shores in time. I say we just let him take care of it. I don't want to use 200 of our oratory power that we do not have. Ellis, no, we're not going to be allies with you. Kavia, we are definitely not going to be allies with you because we're eventually possibly planning to attack you. Um, If we're going to leave him leading an army, we're going to move the rest of the army out of his control. Same thing with you. 
I'm fine with them leading one P uh, army so that their families aren't upset at us. But I don't want to risk all of these units um, becoming loyal to these generals. In fact, you know what? I'm just going to move all of them together under Pyrrhus so that they may become loyal to Pyrrhus. Because that's always good. Nicopolis is still starving. Uh, I have no idea how long the looted actually stays. Starving city. Which is why they are unhappy. Let's just see what happens. Alright, so... Uh, the Hellenic... Okay. So Etoli is now gaining loyalty, while Illyria Graeca is still losing loyalty. Changes by 0 0.29 per month. Albanopolis, why are you so upset? Seriously. It's just a Molossian and angered. Look at that. And that's gonna stay for another two years. Uh, sure. I'll accept the trade, though, even if we're not allies. A gift, thank you very much. Gifts are always nice. Alright, so we gained some civic power. Let's just do some calculations. Is it better for us to move slaves out of these certain areas in Epirus? Like out of uh, Nicopolis, out of Ambrakia, Lucas, and all of these. We can move them for five. So if we move them to five to Orius, and then move them for five to Bilis. That's 10, and then another 5 to move them to Lysos. That's 15. So we would be in a net gain in comparison to using 20 over there. Alright. So that is what we're gonna do. Let's see. Um, nope, if there's just one slave, I wanna, I wanna leave it there. Simply because I want that pop to um, actually grow. And I'm pretty sure... Don't quote me on this, but I believe that you actually have to have at least one pop of that type uh, in a city in order for that type of pop to actually grow. Which means that, um, if I'm not wrong, if I'm not wrong, somebody correct me if I am, but if I'm not wrong, uh, if I move all of the slaves out of Lucas, for instance, um, there just won't be any uh, slaves spawning in Lucas anymore. So we're going to be moving two of these into... Orios. There. Uh, we need more. There's a second one there as well. So, into... Oh, sorry, it's not Oreo. <laughs> it's Oricos. Uh, I kind of want to keep the uh, slaves in Dodona, simply because I wish to um, make another precious metals. Uh, I mean, I make a surplus of pr precious metals, which means that I will also be moving uh, slaves into Dodona. For the very same reason. Um, so, Oricos. Oricos. Like that, we have six slaves over here. Alright, so f we need five more, right? Yeah, five more. So, move five of these into Bilis. Billis. Billis. Alright, we're gonna have to wait a month. Okay. Billis. Billis. And now move five of them into Lysos. That way we're gonna have ten pops in Lysos. Though they still have to become Epirate. So hopefully this guy starts actually doing his job and starts uh, converting pops. He's done zero of that so far. Uh, and once we have uh, a, a majority of Epirate culture in Lysos, we are going to be able to colonize Butthol. And we'll be on 24 cities. We're still gonna have to attack at least one, at least one more like Greek nation or something. For this to actually work, but you know, we'll do it. We'll do what's necessary. Phyllis, move to. We said Lysos. And we're actually, yeah, we'll be moving the Epirate ones. That way, we're actually directly increasing 
the culture here. So we have four Epirate slaves. These guys need to be promoted. Do we have enough? Yeah. I just don't want any... Um, let's actually do it via the... What is this? Macro Builder. Promote tribesmen. I just don't want any tribesmen in our lands. They cause unhappiness because uh, because of the high civilization value, and we do not want that. Even if Talantia was a settled tribe, which I'm not sure if it was. I'm just speaking out of my butt right now. Pyrrhus Ekere has sent word that he has fallen ill. We've gained inflammation. I mean, we do have the money to start seeking treatment, so we'll do that. What's your situation? Not planning our demise, that's always lovely to see. <laughs> Uh, 915. Alright. Uh, so one more. Lysos. There we go. Now we have 10 pops in Lysos. 1, 2, 3, 4. So 4 out of the 10 pops are currently Epirate. I'm pretty sure that we cannot colonize yet. Yeah, dominant culture is not Epirate. So not just yet. We need an Epirate Freeman. I mean, we can try and force this. Let's wait for one month. There. Assimilate two of them. Now it should let us, but we lack the 20 civic required. So next month, we should be able to move one of these Epirate Hellenic Freemen. Boom! And we've just gained another city. Lovely. Uh, defensive leak from Patrai. Nope, definitely not. Alright, so Igon has fallen to Macedon. And now let's just wait for the next war that Macedon will be a part of. And take the chance, or rather take that opportunity, to attack one of the Greek nations. Once we take one more city, we will be a regional power, meaning that we will be able to make an actual alliance with Thrace, not just, you know, wait for them to possibly guarantee us, like I said before. Because just waiting on them to do something before Macedon declare war, declares war is going to be bothersome. At any rate, guys, thank you very much for joining me. I have been Kaiser. Whew, that gambit at the very beginning of this episode was a big one. But luckily enough, it paid off. Um, and sorry, yeah, I just was not confident enough to go to war with Kavia. Because as you can see, Dan Dardania almost immediately after that, became their ally, and they st probably still would have become their ally in the middle of the war, which would have prolonged the war, which would have caused the Macedons to, of course, start planning our demise. Never fun. Never fun. At any rate, thank you very much for joining me. I will see you guys next time, and until then, as always, if you like what I do, please do consider leaving a like, subscribe if you haven't yet, share these videos around, help this channel out, and I will see you next time. Till then, Ad Gloriam.